Life acknowledges the beauty expressed through heartfelt efforts. Now, working together to bring out the confidence within is what Real Life's vision is basically about. With that, BQN, one of the proud projects that Real Life embraces, Smile Train Philippines is among the members of a global alliance of charities working together to share beauty and happiness. This is by giving children with cleft lip, cleft lip and cleft palate back their smiles and confidence. Now to share more all about the efforts undertaken in bringing spark to the confidence of these kids, we'd like to call on Ms. Kimi Cosete Flaviano, the country director of Smile Train Philippines. Let's give her a round of applause. Center. And I think we have some mics 
uh, on the floor. Do we have mics on the floor? Already? Yes? Okay. So if you have a question, please uh, just raise your hand and yes, uh, the mic will go to you. <laughs> please um, mention your name um, and where you're from and your question. Hi, um, good afternoon and congratulations to your launch. My name is Arabelle Jimenez of ArabelleJimenez.com and um, I know the publication is beautiful life. My question is, um, we have a lot of dermatologists and clinics and you know a very famous name here in the country. I would like to know what makes you different from the others and uh, is it also, um, um, would you also consider the um, economic um, situation of the Filipino people when it comes to um, investing in their beauty? Okay, and by the answer, who's, anyone can answer it. Who's going to take that? I'm the dermatologist here, so I guess the question belongs to me. Um, you were asking a particular famous uh, personality. How different from the Can you phrase the question again? Um, how, how is it different um, from the other um, business in this industry? The um, dermatology and medical aesthetics. Well, as a dermatologist, I belong to the Philippine Dermatological Society. We only recognize specialty society for dermatology by the PMA and the PCP. And I would say it's different from the others because we really undergo formal, official, three-year training with uh, some specialization, and we undergo board examinations. That's That makes us different. Uh, okay, um, follow-up question. Um, regarding the ability of the Filipinos to invest in, in this kind of um, beauty treatments, um, is it, um, would you, do you expect a good market here? Affordability, yeah, is that it? Yeah, in the country. Uh, I'm part of the Philippine General Hospital and uh, um, some of our patients, they're not all sick. Uh, we also cater to our countrymen who maybe are looking for a job or um, trying to look good, but you know they cannot afford the, the high-end uh, uh, facilities. Then we offer in BGH a uh, much reduced because it's still government subsidized. But of course, we evaluate our patients in terms of their social and economic capacity. If they will fit. Our uh, criteria, then we can offer this type of procedures to them at a lower cost. Thank That's you. our contribution. Thank you, thank you. Oh, by the way, we'd like to call on stage also to join us um, Stephen Cosmando and Kenny Caviano, just in case you know we might have questions addressed uh, to you in particular. Any other um, one on the floor uh, was a question? About, about what uh, products we actually are launching this morning. Yes, over there at the back. Um, where's the mic? Oh, can someone please pass the mic? Thank you. Again, please state your name. Good your morning, name. I'm Rivka from trendhotspot.com. I'll, I'll address this, I think, I'll address this question to everyone in the group. Um, what can be expected from Happy Lift and Skin Happy Lift and Skin Fill in terms of downtime, and how soon can a patient or an individual go about their day? Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> about downtime. Okay. Uh, concerning the filler, the downtime is more or less zero. You can have a have a little bruising or brightness of the skin, but. All the side effects will disappear in a few days. About the uh, happy lift, the downtown is a little longer, especially in the Asian patient. Because you have a thicker skin compared to the Caucasian patient. You you show that you have a, a little irregularities of, of the skin immediately after the the procedure and uh, I don't know if I'm right with this irregularities. Uh, last after seven to ten days, okay? But fortunately, the, especially women, can 
cover this uh, side of fat with, uh, with the hair, and usually they are not a big, a big problem, especially in, uh, in Caucasian patients. We have irregular, irregular, irregularities, and uh, they disappear after two or three days, so you can understand the downtime is very limited. Um, do I have to answer your question about downtime? We, in the aesthetic business, actually advocate the combination of intent. So what I actually just demonstrated uh, earlier is actually just a red lifting, but the truth of the fact is sometimes we do recommend that it could be combined with alternate and toxin treatments and filler treatments. So it's not just a solo treatment. So there are different indications. Um, concerning the downtime, Dr. Kundar is right about seven to ten days with your your dress. Um, there are four major problems or four more common complications that usually happens and the number one is actually bruising. Okay, this is pretty evident among uh, most of the patients that I'm going to procedure dread lifting. The second is the the accord and deformity or the rippling of the skin, which is actually normal because you, you in fact that's the whole intent of the procedure is actually to retract the skin. The third is actually the dimpling Dimpling occurs on the uh, the, the puncture sites where where we would actually uh, put in the, the threads at the needles and where we insert the threads. And the fourth is actually pain. Uh, pain is relative because it can actually it's, it's a case to case basis. There are some patients who are stoic, but there are some patients who are really very sensitive to pain. And for that reason. Post of treat uh, medication should, should include uh, pain control medications. And that would actually definitely address the problem. And at the same time, cold compress is actually what we normally inform our patients to actually do after the procedures. We generally don't ask patients to massage their head because that would actually uh, release the hold of the barbs because these threads are bars and they actually, uh, that's the main uh, suspending uh, characteristic of the thread. So we don't want to lose that hold. That's why we ask them to, uh, not to massage the area after the treatment. Now, work, they can actually go to work after three or four days, because that's when they, if you're going for a thread treatment. But then again, uh, Dr. Bondar is right, you know. Uh, fillers, on the other hand, are what you call lunch break procedures. That's right, some of my patients who come for their lunch break would actually go back to their office and attend the party. Yes, any other question? Oh, okay, we have one there on the same Hi. table. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Aiki Cole, so from trendhotspot.com. Uh, Follow up question. So, who do you think are the suitable uh, candidates for having the star revitalized? I always give this to my master, <laughs> <laughs> my sensei. <laughs> but my sensei is pointing to the student. <laughs> okay, who are the suitable? But basically, in the, the ideal candidates, is somewhere between 30. place our market on and or position our market on on those patients where I would to 60. However, in my experience, I've actually done patients who are over 60. That's why I told uh, you know South Dakota that you know in, in, in Asians I think you can actually increase the age from 60. I think the oldest that I've done is actually around 65 or especially 66. Okay. And uh, it yielded good results as well. So, who are the candidates? Well, probably, you know, uh, there have been a shift in paradigm as to the concept of beauty among Filipinos. Previously, we would like to look like Westerners. The Filipinos would like to look like Westerners. That's why they want the shape change to, you know, Western looking. But nowadays, 
people want to look like Koreans. <laughs> right, I've seen people nodding, right? Because that is the usual request that I get from, the, from my clinic. And that's actually to convert their oval shape into something the inverted triangle shape. And I guess this is where we come in as you know, aesthetic practitioners to give them what they're actually requesting for. And that is actually to convert their faces into Koreans. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the reason why uh, this procedure may probably help our, you know, those who are in need of uh, what you call the inverted triangle appearance or the polar shape. And some of them would actually have what you call ptosis already in the skin, which is what this thread usually addresses. Uh, the I think that is very interesting to, to compare the Asian and uh, European experience, because usually the European patient are all patients that want to rejuvenate the face. And I noticed that here in Asia, you have a lot of uh, young patients that want to change the shape of the face, because you have a larger face and you want a, 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 a thinner, a thinner face. So, I think that here in Asia, the range of patients is larger than, uh, than, than in Europe because you, you can treat younger and uh, older patients. And it's absolutely right that you age less than uh, Caucasian and uh, so the, 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 the range of the age is very large here. I think that you can treat also very old patients because the quality of the fatty tissue and of the skin absolutely better here in Asia compared to the European patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that the, the result that you can reach also in the old patient, very old patients, is, uh, is better than we experience in Europe. Okay, thanks. Uh, it's a very good question. Actually, you see the ability of the patients to the ability. I think what is important is that you can, uh, um, you can sort of discuss the expectations with your patient. So you cannot do a patient with unreasonable expectations. So this patient should have reasonable expectations and um, you should explain what the threat you do is that we, for example, a uh, surgical face here. So the suitable, remember that the thread will not remove skin or tissues. It will rearrange it. So you need to you need to explain to the patients very well. They might have a different idea on what they would look like. And what the other, uh, Dr. Gondar and Dr. Arzadon have said, is you have to tell them about the possible um, results after, immediately after, a week after, and uh, 30 days after. And then also for downtime, you need to discuss with them what exactly is downtime for a patient. Some patients, like for example, maybe a lot of you will work from home, then there's practically no downtime. After you're done with the procedure, it's an outpatient procedure, you can you can do your work at home. So it depends really on what the patient will look like. If they have to really look good, then you need to tell them maybe seven to ten days. But if they really, if they really just work from home, or just do housework maybe, or just visit home friends and family, then there's practically no downtime. Actually, very while ago, the ideal would be about 30 to 60, okay? But Asian skin is really different. And you know, like for the Philippines, the Philippines is a very demanding country. And I would say a lot of women are very vain. So we are expecting a greater range of patients who would request this. But I think very important to look at the skill of the doctor who's doing it. They have to be very well trained. We have to make sure that they will do the procedure well. Because the procedure, the success actually starts at the choice of the procedure that you're going to use. As you saw a while ago, there are four. And you have to be able to choose the correct one for the result that you would like for your patient. So it starts from the training, it starts from the skill, and the capability to be able to make a good judgment from the beginning until the end. And I think 
that would be very much dependent on the doctor. So I'm going to be the ones who would start to spread and teach this among Filipino doctors. Um, Professor Cruz, I have a question. You mentioned about uh, facial, uh, surgical facial surgery. Okay, what's the, the percentage of, of, of patients undergoing that uh, in the country today? And how different is it? Will the threads used here be an option for, for that as well? Um, there would be major differences. Like uh, the surgical phase it really is the gold standard upon which all of these things are being measured against. So um, there are patients who may not be candidates for a surgical phase lift because it is a major procedure. Patients will have to be under maybe general anesthesia and will have to stay or will have to stay in the hospital or it has to be done in a hospital. So there are patients who are not candidates for that. And this is a very viable alternative to those patients who may not be fit to undergo a surgical facelift. But as I mentioned, you have to temper their expectations. Estelle, it will not be exactly, um, the result of that exactly like a facelift, but you need to show them what the possible results will be. And then if they agree to that and you're, uh, you're able to do it, you're able to prompt to deliver what they expect, then you know, you'll have a happy patient. Thank you. They want comfort, uh, no pain. <laughs> when, when you talk about the invasiveness, there's nothing more invasive than a surgical face lift. When you have huge uh, long incisions along the sides of the face. So this is actually a very minimally invasive uh, procedure. And like what Dr. Fogarda said, it is scarless. There's practically no scars that you would see in about two weeks' time. And as a patient points it out to you, even a trained professional will not know that there was something done there. So this is really practically scarless. And, uh, and I think that it's very important to highlight that the effectiveness of every treatment is related to the invasivity. Okay? If I do this, I create no change of the face of my friends. But if I insert a strap that has the capability to it the soft tissue, I really able to change and improve the, the aging side. So, of course, everyone would like to have a absolutely non-invasive procedure, but unfortunately, it's not possible to create a modification on the anatomy of the face, on the aging, aging side, without a minimal invasive. So, uh, follow up question. Since having said those products right, came from the industry, so can tropical skincare products have the same, same effect as these treatments? Since knowing that it is injectable and since it looks like it's really applicable for everyone to inject it, so is it um, the same thing as, the, as your products as well? Is it topical? Medication is topical, will not give you the lift that happy lift will give you. It would also not give you the volume that skin feel will give you. Topical creams will just improve the surface of your skin, but not actually some movement like lifting and volume. I think we have a question here. What we're, table what we're offering is actually oh, a procedure on people who are averse to actually surgery. So this is a minimally invasive procedure. Uh, I perform surgery of the face, and since this is being offered on patients who actually are averse to the more invasive procedures, then uh, we should give them an alternative. Every time we, are, we encounter patients who actually come into a facial rejuvenation, we always give them the options. So 
police, police, police. So whatever the choice is, it's really up to them. Thank you, Doc. Okay, we have a question here in the front. Yeah, I am a Mochinaris from Mochinaris. Um, I have lots of questions, but um, it's full page. I can see. You know, um, one was that the pre-qualifying test, so the test for allergies, the test for you. Because I, I remember my sister had a procedure that was not out of threat, but she had a keloid developed because of that. Is there a test for the the, uh, the, the outcome at the end? Like, would you know if they're keloid or you just ask them? The, the, the polymer of the strap is uh, carbonized on the acid that are uh, substances used uh, usually in the suture of the industry. So we can say that we, we have a long experience contesting this, this sector. And I think that the biocompatibility of this product is about keloid formers is that you don't form a, a form of keloid with a, an injection. Okay. So that's the same reason why this is actually an advantage, uh, something that we can really offer on um, those particular patients. And then okay. you are doing a sit up. That's right. Now, the thing about your, the, I think the threats have been answered already. Now, as regards to the fillers, the fillers that we're, that we're launching is actually uh, made of hyaluronic acid that is bacterial derived, so it's non-human. So allergy is usually uh, unheard of, or if there would be, there would be random information for hyaluronic acid killers. But for, um, I think that's a two, you already answered the, the thread. So basically, um, these procedures using needles may not provoke an allergic reaction at the same time uh, your, your fear of keloid formation. Unless you actually make a huge car and that person is actually a keloid former. And the second is, in the face, we rarely form keloids. So if this is actually a procedure that you perform in the face, Okay, uh, second question, is it reversible? Like if you had it done a year ago, will that, if you take the thread out, will it stay? Or uh, it's going to drop again? For the threads, yes, it's reversible as long as it's still there because the threads are actually absorbable. So even if you just wait for a couple more months, it will be reabsorbed by the body, so there's no need for you to actually remove it. Now, as for the fillers, there is an antidote. Okay, if you're not happy with the fillers, then we offer hyaluronidase, which actually reverses the effect of your hyaluronic acid uh, skin pill. Um, that's a usual question asked. Uh, after you put the thread, are we going to sag again when the thread disappears? So the thread actually can stay in place till about 15 months, after which it's absorbed. That's why it's an absorbed thread, unlike the ones previous where they were not absorbable. But you see, there's a normal skin reaction. There is some sort of fibrosis or there's something that forms around the thread that keeps that part of the skin lifted. So even if the thread has been absorbed already, there will still be some lifting, so you don't have that fear of the face actually dropping when the thread already is absorbed. Yeah, that's nice to know. Important question, how much is the procedure? How much? <laughs> Do we have a price? Yeah, ballpark. Um, <laughs> I declare <laughs> my <laughs> Or good approach. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, in, in, in Europe, the, the, the price of the procedure is quite similar to other procedures like auto-intaxin and, and, and fillers. For example, if you inject two syringes of HA filler and if you use two threads, the, the cost is more or less the same. So it could be around uh, 500 euros. Uh, in the Philippines. In the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> one box of thread, uh, one box of thread uh, can cost around 49,000 pesos, but it has six threads. So you can only three patients already. But in terms of the procedure, per se, it depends on the doctors. 
Um, having said that, uh, the Philippines is actually a center or hub for medical tourism. There's a reason for that. It's cheaper in the Philippines. And the exchange rate of the dollar to the peso is actually, you know, as you know, it's pretty high for the dollar. And that also being the case makes the Philippines cheaper. And Philippine doctors are known also to actually we don't charge exorbitantly, and that would already give you an idea uh, of how cheap the procedure is going to be in the Philippines. Okay, I can tell my friends in the DOB about that. <laughs> so let me, um, I'll give you the range, okay? So if you're qualified and you go to a government institution, all right, um, you probably will just have to pay uh, for the French, of course, or for the fillers, but you don't have to pay the doctor. If you're qualified, right? it's a, uh, they can, they can. They can, they can go to a government hospital yes. and get But, them. yeah, but right now, um, it's, a, it's only like DGH who probably has the experience. I don't know if he uh, wants a government hospital, probably not. So, uh, there you go, that's the lower end of the range. So higher than you can, you can just um, sort of yes. Yeah, we've got doctor friends. <laughs> They'll give you a discount. Another one. Will this be available to any doctor? Can any doctor find these? Like, or do you have to train him to use the products? Mystery. I think mystery is from many people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, in the Philippines, we don't sell it to any doctor. We only sell the threads to those who attended the training. We'll be doing a lot of workshops as part of, of uh, the launch trades. And we are we are training also our experts to do to, to do the training to, to their fellow colleagues, the plastic surgeons, cosmetic surgeons, dermatologists, and the genetics. And to what Risa just mentioned. In Menorini and real life, worldwide, we created uh, one uh, educational platform. If you saw the previous presentation slide, in the lower corner, there is this word of ICD, Innovation and Consciousness in Medical Education. So, um, in order to ensure safety, which is the most important, patient safety, and also safety for the doctors who perform the procedures, we have agreed that every page or every doctor who wants to perform the procedures must obtain ICD certification. So, and there is a, there is a very well structured curriculum for treadlift, one or two days training, depending on the level, basic or intermediate or advanced, and also for the fillers. So just to make sure that, because ultimately patient safety and our practice safety is the most important, so yeah, to ensure that uh, when we perform, it's, it's for the both parties are protected. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and uh, as we can see here, all the uh, four trainers on the stage um, here um, collaborating with us. That's why we really developed the training module, the training curriculum in the ICD with all the leading professor, the opinion leaders in this uh, aesthetic field. So there, they have to be trained and attend the, the training, the workshop, before they can actually do it. Um, last question. For you. <laughs> uh, all smile train. Can you tell us more on um, how is, um, what's the support for, for smile train and um, is there money, monetary um, involved here or are they going, are they going to um, commit and helping out in the operation? Thank you. So on Saturday, there is a launch of the program and a scientific symposium for uh, medical professionals. And part of that, they have, Menorini has invited a artist. So she's a painter from Indonesia. Uh, her name is Monica Patsari. And so she was also brought into Singapore and to Hong Kong for the same event. And what she does is she's an artist and basically paints during the event. And that painting is auctioned off. So all of the proceeds, so whatever value is put on the painting that is donated entirely to Soundtrack. 
it has been a great collaboration because Monica Habsari specialty uh, is always she always draw about the human facial expression. So as we launch new product for aesthetic medicine, that's why we assigned uh, six painting of Monica Habsari for six countries and titled the masterpiece in aesthetic medicine. So she will draw very beautiful faces and at the end it will go for auction and. The painting um, in Hong Kong and in Singapore, in terms of value, maybe I will not disclose the total value, but uh, as we know, one surgery approximately required around $300 in average one to help one children. And from the two paintings that has been drawn by Monique in Hong Kong and Singapore, we managed to help 60 children. So it's, it's uh, that's why hopefully um, this will be additional to what um, our train has, um, you know, has performed here in the Philippines. And that's why the idea when we launch We Life product, we are sharing beauty and sharing happiness to also to the people who need it. In this case, children with cleft palate. So it's, uh, it's, it will be a very meaningful night, I believe, for all of us. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I need to also uh, revise my comment. Uh, skin, uh, Happy Leaf is already in the Philippines as we speak now. And ha sorry, Happy Leaf is already in the Philippines as we speak now. And Skin Feel will arrive in the next two weeks. So I think previously during my presentation, I'm saying in the next couple of months, mm -hmm. next couple of weeks. So of sooner. Months. Yes. Soon. All the better. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think um, some uh, lady in white, you want to you raise your hand earlier? Oh, he asked the question for you. All right, oh, over there. You have a question? Yes, hi, uh, good morning. I'm Felicia from FelicianMe.com. So my question is for the doctors. Um, since uh, they mentioned that it's already available in the country, how has been the response from the doctors to this to these products? Um, are they receptive? Do they prefer this to the current ones being used today? It's extremely good. So, but uh, as with anything new, there is some um, um, skepticism, of course, because, like, for example, um, in, in our organization, we're all plastic surgeons and we're used to doing surgical patients. So it's only, it's just a matter of informing them and maybe them trying it out. But this is like uh, what everybody's saying a viable alternative to those who may not be suitable candidates for a surgical patient. So, uh, Maybe in about two months, I can answer your question. Thank you so much. Any more? Oh, yes. Lady in pink. Center table. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Denise from Paisian Rat Blog. Okay, my... Oh, sorry. My question is, how does happy live different from other treadmills? And if I heard correctly, the effect the effect lasts 15 months and then longer because of fibrosis. Thank you. Who's going to take that? Professor? <coughs> okay, nowadays we have a lot of uh, different types of drugs. And uh, um, I use uh, a lot of them. I have to say that the PDO drugs, usually they come from Korea. And the problem that has this spread that uh, the duration of the result are probably shorter because the absorption of PDO is uh, faster than the caprolactam. Then we have other types of thread with cones. And uh, I use that type of, of threads. And uh, in my experience, the, the, you can tailor the procedure on the face of, 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 of the patient better with happy lid than with the cone uh, threads because you can change the, the pattern sometimes of insertion and uh, another important aspect is the j stitch because the j stitch technique can really increase the anchoring action of, of the threads and uh, about the result I cannot give you but in my experience, the, the result of that we have very, very good and, and it's very important mainly that my patients are 
very satisfied. Asia-Pacific countries, there will be one training center, at least one 
in every country. So this is in order to, to provide a very good educational platform, standardized training modules, so the doctors will be very well protected. If anything happened, for example, complication management or the reporting system of the adverse event or um, uh, if any complication occurs, that also will help the doctors. The problem is many products were launched before without having this additional service excellence. This is what we are, we are building together with all the key opinion leaders um, in all over Asia Pacific as the forum stage today. So it's the training curriculum, the patient management, the complication uh, resolution, all this we, we provide because for better meaning in every country we have our own dedicated sales and marketing team. So all the happiness in will be delivered by Mena Rini on staff, not distributor staff. So Mena Rini sales team. So that would be what would differentiate when we launch Happy Lip and Skin Feel in the market with other products in the market. Yeah. And sorry, I think that it's very important to note that we propose only five techniques. And this is quite strange for a, a company that wants to sell the products. And when I was involved in this adventure with the Menorini, they asked me, we want to limit the, the, the type of techniques to propose to the doctor. We want to start with safe technique that give good results. And of course, we can show techniques for the high brow, for the nose, for the lip, for the hair, I don't know, for the bottom, to propose the breast, for everything. But it's very important to, to present to the doctor all this safe procedure that give really good results. Okay. And of course, this could seem quite limited, okay, because we give specific indication. Okay. And, but they think that this is very important because they really want to do an consciousness uh, education of, 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 of the doctor and this is, I think it's very important. Alright, so I think we're going to wrap things up already because uh, lunch is ready. So. Um,